<laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Duty Boy and welcome back to my Minecraft survival series. On today's episode, I have traveled about a thousand blocks away from my base and I came out here to find a couple of turtles. And here's one. There's, there's another one swimming around in the water here somewhere. And I just fed them both some seagrass. And now this one has just laid some turtle eggs right there. See them? I wanted to get a couple of turtle eggs from these guys before I take off. The sun is starting to get low, so I'll be floating out a little bit here in my boat. Hopefully you can see it, but right down there in the water is a shipwreck. And look at what I found down in that sea wreck. A piece of bamboo. That is important. That is a game-changing resource right there. As soon as you get your first piece of bamboo, you can start making scaffolding. Then it becomes a lot easier to make your builds. So now I'm gonna use my Silk Touch pickaxe to pick up these last couple of eggs. And there we go, now my total is up to 12. You can see it down in my hotbar there. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start heading home. So on today's episode, what I plan to do is build a house for bees. I want a honey farm and I want a house for bees because all of those honey blocks will be another good resource to use in building my uh, nether gold farm. And that's something I've been wanting for a while. I had one that I built at the very end of my last season of Duty Boy Plays Minecraft and I didn't get to use it all that much. So I want to build one again. So here we are at a beehive. Uh, I'm just at the edge of the flower forest here. Looks like I'm gonna have to plant my bed and sleep pretty soon But what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for these bees to notice that it's getting dark and to go back in this hive And then I want to use silk touch to pick up this hive so I could take it back with me here in my ender chest You'll notice that I already have a couple of bees nests and these are not stacking because one of them has bees And the other one doesn't okay looks like that bee went back into the hive. Oh here comes another one Hey, you go buddy, go back into your hive. All right, so now I'm going to take this bee's nest out of here and I am gonna take it back with me. We're gonna sleep real quick and then we're gonna hop in the boat and head home. Guys, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that if you like the bee house I'm gonna to build today or the bee farm that I'm gonna work on, please leave a like. It shows the video to more people on YouTube and it'll really do wonders for me and I sincerely appreciate it, thank you. And here we are, we're coming back in view of Taiga Town, my spawn chunks, and my base, the place where I started off in this Minecraft world. All right, let's get, uh, let's get ashore and let's unpack and let's figure out what we're going to do today. So the location for my bee farm, where I thought it would be best, is right over here. As you can see, I'm calling an apiary, but I'm not sure that's the right term, so I'm going to call it a bee and honey farm. We're gonna build the building right in this area, but there's kind of like a little ledge right here that's sort of getting in the way. And then there's this sort of steep wall that just kind of runs all the way down over to that area. I think it would be best to kind of put a retaining wall from there all the way around uh, below the library guild here and all the way along this wall and over to that edge. I'm going to make it out of stone and stone brick and andesite and a bunch of stuff, of course. And I'm going to add that in first and then we'll get to the brass tacks of honey farming and building the apiary. So I'm going to do that in a quick time lapse. So the purpose of a retaining wall is to be a rigid vertical wall that holds back the soil. The all important first step is to decide where the wall is going to go. I like for my walls to be inset one block. So that's why you see me running it kind of over these blocks. Right now I'm just kind of trying to determine where the wall goes and I'm filling it in with pure stone blocks until I get the whole wall laid out. This is the area where I intend to build a Mason's Lodge and a church. So putting the retaining wall here and then filling in the dirt all the way out to the wall will add quite a bit of extra flat ground for me to build on. At this point, I decided to hook the wall around this little jet of land a little bit further than I originally intended, but I don't think I'm going to maintain this section of the wall. I think I'm actually going to tear it down in a future episode probably so that I can expand this, uh, the top area and have more land in, on which to build the church because I'm definitely going to need it. 
Now with the retaining wall all laid out along the edge of the land here and more land filled in, comes the all important task of texturing the wall. I start at the area where I stopped and I have to go back to bake some more cracked bricks. I love using cracked bricks in my walls. It adds a nice texture variation and I, I just love them. Then I'm going to work my way all the way up back to the starting point. So guys, I decided to top off the wall by adding a half slab every other block. And I've used the same half slab as the stone below it. We'll probably have to get over there to see it well. Oh yeah, this is a much better view. So what you can see from here, what I'm doing, basically where it was brick, I just extended the brick up by half where it was stone up by half. Same thing with cobblestone. When it was a cracked brick, I just used brick above it. And yeah, I think it looks I think it looks pretty good. But yeah, I really like this wall and now I'm ready to move on to the beekeeper's house. Okay, I'm ready to do today's build and I've gathered together a whole bunch of uh, stuff here that I'm going to use, especially dark oak logs and oak logs. I want to build a bee house that is vaguely reminiscent of a bee, uh, but I don't want it to be like, kitschy or campy i don't i want it to be like you know contrasting dark and uh light colors and i'm definitely thinking about using the strip version of this and yeah i think the strip version of that too i think that'll look good i definitely want to figure out the layout of my house and i think before i do any of that we're going to have to take down the sign here i really do want the beekeeper house to kind of come up to like fill this entire area right here, but also go over to here. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick layout and then we'll see what we're looking at. So today I'm planning for a simple build and it's simple by my standards and it's gonna be a basic, pretty much a five by five house that's then extended over here into another five by five house going the opposite direction. And then on this side, I want a little cellar like basically with an outdoor type of entrance and this down here is where the bee and honey farm is going to be so uh yeah if i just kind of raise all these up one and then uh, put some take these logs out underneath and put some dirt underneath uh, i think we'll fill up we'll bring the we'll bring the dirt all the way out to here and i think things will be a lot more clear to you guys now with the wood all raised up to the same level it kind of gives you a better a little bit better idea of the idea uh, the area that i'm framing out so in placing all of the dirt you want it to look as natural as possible you don't want it to look like you just threw a bunch of dirt down so naturally i'm going to start by filling in all of this area that's underneath the frame here that I've erected. And I'm also going to give it an additional space, uh, an additional block of grass out to the side just so that it has a very firm looking foundation to stand on. Okay, and now that I've got all the dirt in, it, it looks a little chunky, right? So we want to start uh, bringing out the ground here. I don't have that many more grass blocks, but I'll go ahead and use them. And then we'll just use these other dirt blocks and they should all connect up. And then, yeah, we definitely want some more room in front of the yard here so that we got a base. I'm thinking I want to put like almost like a honey well like uh, some kind of a big honey vat that uh, we could even like put some like a shovel or a tool in using the armor statues mod. That would look kind of cool. That way it looks like we got some way that we're sort of like, uh, like the honey is being stirred out in the front yard or something like that. And again, we need like a chimney over on this side. So I definitely want to bring the uh, bring it out here. I think I might actually take this in a little bit just so... Uh, yeah, yeah, that looks a little bit better. That way that tree has its own platform and it's a little further away from that tree. And so the way that this area of the hill curves around, I want to try to mimic that. That way, it uh, on the levels above, that way it looks like slightly more uh, organic hill growth. And I think this is starting to look pretty good. With the fireplace, the fireplace is going to come out at least two. So it would be right on the edge there. So this would actually need to come out another one. And then I think we're going to put another ledge down here. 
All right. Once the grass grows in on all the dirt, we'll be looking at that and seeing how that looks. But this is looking like a pretty good frame already. All right. So now that I've got quite a majority of the house all framed out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start raising these uh, dark oak columns on either end all the way up to five. These dimensions and the things that I do are all kind of based on building a lot of houses and using the dimensions that I've found worked. And one of the dimensions I found worked for a bottom level is to make it five high. So with this being one, we're going to go up another two, three, four, five. Where am I? I missed it because of the chopping. All right. So it's all, that's only four. Uh, but on this one, we're definitely going to go up five, one, two, or one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and five. All right. And then we're going to go across here. And then we'll put another two down there. All right. So yeah, the, the total size of it is looking pretty good. Somehow, yeah, somehow I wound up with six, didn't I? <laughs> two, three, four, five. That's where I wanted to go. So this entire level up here is not necessary. And we'll just, uh, since we've already got those in hand, we'll just uh, fix that up. All right. So yeah, five high five across. It's a nice square to start off with. I apologize if you're getting a lot of background on this audio. I'm going to do my best to scrub it, but I live in Las Vegas and we've got planes going overhead. My neighbor has just decided that they want to hear the oons oons music. I live in Party Central, basically. Okay, and wow, I ran out of dark oak, in my hand at least, uh, right as I finished up the frame on the lower level. So another thing I like to do is I like to get my facade complete. And what I mean by that is I like to figure out what a portion of the building is going to look like. And I think with these with these on the sides here, I'm actually going to chop out a couple pieces and I'm going to replace them with oak planks just to give like a kind of patchy, textury sort of look to the build. I want it to be pretty rickety looking. I want this to look like a very esoteric kind of house. I'm trying to, I'm doing this in order to try to build the character here. I actually want the individual to, uh, who, who lives out here and takes care of bees and stuff. Uh, my idea for that person is maybe they're Maybe they're a little strange and that, and I don't mean any offense to like real world beekeepers anywhere, but what I'm talking about here is building the character of your area. And that's definitely what I've been doing the whole time I've been building Taiga Town. Okay, and with some uh, dark oak fences for a window just to kind of keep it open and airy and a uh, little flower box outside, uh, try to envision additional spruce trapdoors on either side of this. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, and so we're gonna kind of do sort of a double roof is what I'm thinking. I wanna have a roof here and also one that kind of goes along here. Yeah, this one's just gonna jut out over. I mean, normally a lot of times what you can do is when you have a section that protrudes a little bit, you just have this roof, uh, you know, so you just have this kind of turn out to face the front. That's not what I want to do this time. So I'm going to take that stair back and I'm going to continue putting some dark oak slabs underneath here. All right. Yeah. I mean, simple house, uh, reminiscent of a bee. I'm not sure. So what else I was thinking about in incorporating a build and I'm going to go ahead and stand on top of this saw blade since it does me absolutely no damage whatsoever. Uh, I think I'd like to incorporate honeycomb up into the roof here. I think I'd like to go ahead and use some more of this stripped oak log to go across as like beams, similar to what I've done on some of my other builds. Nothing that's nearby though. In between the beams, I'm going to knock out certain pieces of it and replace it with honeycomb. That way it looks like the bees inside the beekeeper house have actually nested in the roof and converted some of the wood into their hive. All right, this is working out very well for me, I think. So since I've got the uh, the basic frame of the house all conceived of and uh, I sort of understand how the facade is going to make an impression on the approaching visitor, 
Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead. Hello, Mr. Sheep. Are you over there having a nice snack? Uh, yes, I think I'm going to go ahead and dig out the cellar. And then I'm going to build, go ahead and build the honey farm down underneath there using these three bee nests that I have. And I'm going to start breeding and uh, uh, harvesting the products of the bees. All right, so I've dug out the floor inside the house frame and I've, uh, I've gone ahead and I've uh, done a little demo of the kind of floor that I'm going to make. Uh, it's going to be, obviously, it's going to be a mixed texture. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dig this down at least another two blocks here. Uh, yeah, so there we are coming out through this doorway and then I'm just going to dig all of this back. So I'm just sort of fleshing out the doorway of the basement with uh, cobblestone just to get kind of get an idea of the shape of this area. I'm going to need some stairs to come down here and we can't put a stair there right in front of the door. That's not going to work. So this is all going to have to go back at least one more. Uh, yeah, actually, it's kind of perfect. So so then all of this is actually going to be cobblestone and variety of mixed stones, just like we did. And the walls in here are also going to be stone. So it actually makes sense to tear all these out, too, and replace them with stone as well. All right. So I've got a majority of the farm dug out. And I realize that uh, this it, it's going to need to be about seven spaces long. So here we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to there. We need a space. Uh, my thinking was is that the farm was too high and that we could dig down the collection system, the item collection system into the ground. But I don't think that's going to work out. I think we're going to need to bring it down one so that the redstone, which goes on top of the harvesting device, will have space. All right. So I'm not exactly sure who came up with this design. I'm pretty, I you know, I have a good idea that it might have been Shulker Craft. So we need to be able to detect the signal from the bee's nest. And uh, I don't want to put the bee's nest just yet in just yet because I don't want to risk the possibility of the bees popping out. Uh, in fact, I might wait until it's nighttime before I actually bring out the bee's nest. But what's going to happen is we're going to put a line of uh, redstone up there and then we're going to continue the line up there. Um, the actual signal strength of a full bee's nest is five, a power level of five, which means that the entirety of it will travel five full lengths of redstone dust. So what we need to do is kind of curve that up and over the farm and back to a dispenser, which can do the harvesting. So this is one, two, three. And then above here, I believe we want to do another block. And that would be four. Uh, let's see. And then we are going to want to do another block to right there, I believe. Yeah, so that should be one, two, three, four, five, all the way down. So then we're going to need another block here. We'll put the bees hive there. And yeah, then we're going to need a little bit of a pit here in order to run hoppers. Uh, so the hoppers could be hard to get to. So I think I'm what I'm going to do is turn them all going into the wall. And then I'm actually going to take out this section of wall so that we can get to the collection chest. All right, so they all go that way. And then we're going to need uh, to tear out these stones that I put here. All right, so the collection chest will fit right in this little nook. And all we need to do is uh, we just take out these blocks right here and continue this little hopper train all the way around to the side. All right, so once you get into here, you will descend. And it's nighttime, so it's actually a good time to put my bees nests in here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put a bees nest right there. And on top of it, we're going to want a dispenser going down into it. All right, yeah, we got a couple items in here, but no, no proceeds yet. Uh, let's look at this. Yeah, it has a honey level of five. So uh, it looks like it activated, but there's nothing in the dispenser to shear it or collect the honey. But as you can see here, the entire line is lit up all the way back to the dispenser. So that's good. All right, so we're actually going to have hoppers on top of here going into each of the dispensers. That way we can have a constant refill of bottles and shears into each of them. Uh, so all that's left to do now is to put out the other three beehives and then make sure that we can uh, finish up this farm. 
Okay, so this last one is going to be a tight fit. I'm going to quickly try to put the beehive in there. And then, oh, I didn't make it. Oh, he got out. And he's getting out the door. No, no, Mr. P. Okay, I need that bee for breeding, but I also don't want any more other bees to get out. Let's see if I can go get a lead and pull him back in. All right, there's my bee there. Let's see if we can put a lead on him. Yes, okay. So now we can lead the bee over here. Back to the cellar, little buddy. It's fine. Come on in. Yay. All right. Waiting for night is a great excuse to go catch up on some farming and make some money. And now that it's nighttime, that bee that I left uh, wandering around down in the basement is probably looking for a way back into his hive if he hasn't gotten there already. Okay. Hopefully it's okay. So I think I'm going to go get my azure blue rays and I'm going the uh, the same flower that I put out front here and I'm going to go ahead and plant them and try to finish this up before the bees pop out again. Okay, and now the bees, when they, the bees will be able to come in and out of their hives. They'll be able to pollinate on these azure blue A's, if that's how you're pronouncing that correctly. And they'll be held in place by these hoppers above them. All right, and it's morning now, and there they are. It looks like we've got about four bees, and we're definitely going to want to make them multiply. So we're going to get each of these guys to breed up a couple more bees. And we're going to close the door because the little ones might literally fly out of there still with the hoppers even covering it up. All right. So while these guys are sleeping, I'm going to load up each of these dispensers with a random assortment of glass bottles and shears. That way, when the bees emerge from the hive, the dispenser will be activated and it will, it will randomly use either shears or glass bottles to collect the honey or honeycomb and we'll send it over here to the collection chest. All right, and I'm just going to fill up these little hoppers here with uh, a couple stacks of uh, extra glass bottles each. I'll probably come back with some additional shears. All right, guys, and with some extra finishing touches on the walls, just to texture things up a bit and some stairs to cover up the mess area in the back, we have ourselves a nice little and easily refillable honey farm. All right, guys, so I put three stairs down going to this cellar, and with that all marked out, now I know which of these side dirt blocks to take out in order to replace with stone. All right, and with a couple of slabs matching the uh, textures of the, of the rocks beneath them, I think we've got a nice little entrance to the cellar here and our bee farm. All right, so now that we've got the bees nest all taken care of, I'm back on top of the house. I have finished all the walls and all the texturing, and I'm just uh, finishing off, topping up this little arch of the roof here. And of course, I'm going to do it the way I typically do it. Not looking to redesign the wheel here, but of course, we're going to have a little apex there. And as you saw, we sort of have this coming up here. I think instead we're going to probably take out this stair and then we'll just have two regular oak planks there and then we can have another one on top of here going up uh, another one another solid plank there another stair on top of it and I think in order to get to the top I'm just going to go back and forth on this one so I think we're going to put uh, one of these upside down ones here, another outward facing one here, just like we did on that side. And then we want to go right down here and we want to start a, another section of the roof that kind of comes straight up here, just like that until we got it meeting in the middle. Now, this section of roof, uh, the, the stairs are actually going to continue going along this beam all the way out. And then we're going to have the same kind of rising roof on this side, except it's going to be a lot smaller. All right, just to finish out the frame of the roof here, I am going to take this back, that uh, create a line along here of slabs. Yeah, it connects up nicely to the stair there. It doesn't look too bad at all. And then on every other slab, I'm actually going to raise it up to a full block and yeah it butts right into there like that I think that looks pretty good and then we're going to do the same thing on this side with a line of slabs just going straight across the top there and then we're going to get on top of that and again every other one we're going to raise it up to a full plank. 
All right, so I have a couple pieces of honeycomb already, and I want to kind of show you my concept for the roof here. So like I've done on previous builds, I want to go across the roof with oak or stripped oak, just like that. And then what I'd like to do is sort of break it up and replace certain pieces with honeycomb, just like that. Maybe like two pieces at a time. That way it looks like the bees who... I will uh, breed and have inside the house here are actually honeycombing the, the wooden roof of the house. Okay, and there we have it. That is my concept for the roof. How, what do you guys think? Please post down in the comments and let me know what you think of this concept. I really like it. And I'm going to continue going around. Excuse me, Jack. I'm going to continue. Uh, I'm going to do it again over here, but it's just going to be too high. Yeah, it's just going to be two blocks high. And I'm going to do something similar, but a little different on the back side. All right. And just like that, I think we've got a very nice side of the house here. I'm going to get back and look. Uh, it's kind of a bad angle. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe we'll take that piece out right there. That way we just have more of a, because right now it looks like an error has been made almost. Okay, much better. Okay, guys, what do you think? I'm standing on this little hill back here behind the house, and I went ahead and decided to add two dormer roofs, uh, more like little vents to the top of it, both facing off the back of the house. And, of course, I tried to repeat the thing with uh, replacing certain pieces of wood with uh, honeycomb. And as I get more honeycomb, I might actually, I've decided I might actually come in and replace some of these pieces on the lower level with honeycomb too, because it doesn't make sense that it would just be the roof. Of course, it would be all over. Okay, guys, I have run out of time for this episode, and I'm so sorry about that. So what I did was I went ahead and I finished the build, and I'm just going to take you on a little walkthrough. So let's go. All right. So as I said, I wanted to have like a little uh, honey mixing well out here and here it is there's honey blocks on the top there and there is a shovel stuck down into it unfortunately the shovel is kind of sticking straight up there's an invisible armor stand that's holding the shovel and uh, I'm gonna need to get a little bit better with armor stands I uh, just wanted to go ahead and uh, get it in there and show you my idea though and on the front of the building here I've got a uh, beehive out front the bees down below have been making quite a bit of honeycomb and uh, honey bottles, there they are. And there we go. That's uh, everything that's almost everything that's come out of the farm so far, except for what I used in the build. And let's go inside. So as you can see, there's another beehive in here. And there is a little flower box with, full of uh, more of these flowers for the bees to pollinate. Uh, over here, I created a little crafting area for the beekeeper. And then over here, well, I put a lead by the door here just in case a bee get, goes away or manages to get outside by accident. You can uh, go grab them. I guess they're in their hive right now. Maybe they'll pop out while I'm here. Uh, over here is a little kitchen area with a little sitting area for the beekeeper and of course there's a welcoming cake everybody gets cake and over here is a little writing area I turned this this is a beehive and I turned it around it kind of looks like a little file box and that looks pretty cool and then upstairs here we have a little sleeping area for the beekeeper it's all nice and cozy I think maybe it needs a couple carpets up here and I think maybe I can uh, handle that uh, in between episodes and there's the bee See, they can just kind of fly around in here and live in harmony with the beekeeper. Of course, at some point, I'm going to want to get the honey or get the honeycomb out of that hive, and then they're probably all going to get quite mad at me. So, guys, please let me know what you think about this build down in the comments. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you want to see more like it? Please let me know, and I will see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this, please like it so that more people on YouTube see it, and please consider subscribing so that you can see more in this series. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great day. Goodbye. Okay, kitties, you just hang out here while I go in and see what's going on with the bees. Okay, very carefully now. I'm going to try to 